you don't, there is going to be a price to pay. Remember, years ago, Joyce Myers said, God asked her to do something, and she did it. And when she got done, he said, you weren't my first choice. You were my 127th choice. And they said, didn't that make you mad? She said, no, I'm just glad I won. Whether we're the first choice or not, be thankful that we won. But when he did finally go, they got down to business. Their life stopped everything. They went on a fast because they were serious about it. They did. Yes, well, go. this nation needs to wake up and realize that if we don't turn back to God, there yes. is consequences to pay, and the Christians need to get out and vote. Amen. And they need to vote the Bible. And they need to find Come the on, candidates man. that are willing to stand up and honor God's word. We need to do that. Amen. But that afternoon of it was spirit, Jonah got an attitude. Sometimes when people get saved, people won't let them stay saved. They want to keep them in the sin they were in. We should rejoice on one time. The shepherd went out for the one that was lost, and he came back rejoicing because he found out one that was lost. We were lost out in sin, and when we came back, the angels rejoiced and praised God for that. And then if you go up, Peter rejected Christ three times. He said, oh no, I'll, I'll, I'll die with you. Then no, I'll do it. Yeah, we get all up in ourselves bragging. And then when it comes down to rubber meets the road, are we there? If you're not in the Word and the Word in you, you will fall. You will fail. But if you have become the Word, you won't fail because the Word is stronger Amen. than anything the devil will ever throw at you. <clears throat> the cop crowed, and Peter realized he had denied Christ three times. But when we get in, and the Lord gets inside of us, it matters. Because then we will have it. But then you go to the second chapter of Acts. Peter Preach, and how many people came to know the Lord and they all understood in their native language well they must have been drunk or something to be able to do that I don't care how drunk you get you ain't going to speak in a dozen languages at the same time that ain't going to happen but he was able to do that people say well that's back in the Bible it happens today now if we let it. And I'll share this. Uh, but years back, we were over at Good Sam at um, somebody we knew was in ICU. And it was on a Saturday, and we were going there before we went to church over in Lebanon. And there was an Oriental family there that never had less than 12, 15 people. And found out it was the grandmother was in ICU, I guess. Anyway, um, I told my wife, I said, I, I feel like I need to at least get her name, turn it in for prayer tonight, or pray with them if they wouldn't mind. I just felt I needed to do it. If you're led of the Holy Spirit to do something, don't hesitate. Don't do it. Well, anyway, I went over to the one grandson, and he was like 21, and I said, excuse me, I was wondering if I could pray with the family or at the very least, get your grandma's name and that way turn it in for prayer tonight. He gave me the strangest look and walked away from him, never said a word to me. I said, well, that went over well. And he went over and talked to his sister and she came back and she said, I'm sorry, my brother doesn't speak English, but he thinks you want to pray with us. I said, absolutely. When you're a lot of the Lord, even if they can't speak the language, they will know. Amen. They will know by the fruits that you bear, which you are bearing. Well, she went over and spoke to her mom and dad, and I guess there was about 12 of us. And she said, I don't know how you pray, but when we pray, we like to hold hands because it forms a circle, and in God there is no beginning or ending. And I said, absolutely, we'll pray. Excuse me. We prayed, and I didn't feel a blessed thing. I got done, her mom and dad told her 
to tell me that was the most beautiful prayer they had ever heard, and they heard it in their native language. And none of them except her spoke English, but they all understood what I prayed in their native language. He's still doing what he did then today. Well, I had a pastor tell me, well, yeah, you speak in a tongue, still I speak in plain English. We can speak plain English, and when it's needed, the Holy Spirit will move and let them understand what you're saying, because there was a need. Now, it's not going to happen every time, because every time there's not a need. But language is a barrier the devil wants to use. Amen, brother. But I don't care about him. He's just a nuisance that tries to nip at you. He needs to stay behind you where he belongs and under foot where you can stomp his head a while. But we're going to go over to the third chapter here in Acts. And Peter and John were going up to the temple. And how many times do we keep going to church? We get complacent. It's the same thing over and over and over. No, it should be new every time. The Bible's new. It's Every day you can find something new in it. It's a living word. It's not a dead book. It's a living word. But sometimes we go up and, and we're maybe sick or afflicted or whatever's going on, and we just kind of put up with it instead of expecting God to move and counting on it. And we need to do that. But it's said here, the first verse. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Excuse me. The St. Peter and John about to go into the temple asking alms, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him, with John said, Look on us. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle above received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked, and entered in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. He was expecting a little bit of money, maybe he could get him something to eat. God had something better than that. Sometimes we go trying to get a cheeseburger from McDonald's when he's got a porterhouse steak that he wanted us to have. He wants better for us than what we're expecting. We need to know the word and then stand on the word and expect it to be fulfilled. And if we would expect it to be fulfilled, we would start seeing that to happen. But he who expected nothing ain't going to be deceived because you ain't going to get nothing. But if you go at it expecting it, no, my left hand doesn't all the way work, but that doesn't bother me. I'm not accepting the way it is, and I won't accept that. I continue to go on brother. and do the best I can with what I have, and God will respect that. They say, well, yeah, but by now you should. There's a reason sometimes where we don't get healed immediately. Right. Those other times when they are. But Peter and John went in, and they said, look on us. But then when didn't have any silver or gold, but they had something better. They had healing. Well, would you like somebody to keep supporting you or give you the means to go get a job that you could support yourself? Well, wouldn't that be a better deal? Amen. Of course it would. But some of the political people have set up programs to hold people back. They're saying they're helping them, but it holds them back. It gives them no incentive to get a job. We need to have an incentive to get a job. We need to have an incentive to go about our Father's business and start praying for this election coming up and pray the Bible. Amen. Amen. I like what Pastor Maggard put, and I talk about that a lot because it's serious. 
that the Christians get down and understand. God wants to heal this land. We're a blessed nation. Yes, we are. You think of the production that went on during World War II and how many tanks, guns, planes that they produced. It boggles the mind to think a bomber an hour could come out. But we were able to do it. We had unity. We had a Amen. common purpose. Well, if the church would get together in a common Come purpose, on, we could see that. Yes. Amen. But too many churches are worried Amen. about their own little doctrinal things. Amen. Well, you can't do it this way. Well, you can be a member of our church, but to be a Christian, you'll have to take classes to learn how. No, you need to get on your knees, repent of your sins. And when you repent of your sins, you're born again. Amen. And it's good to train and to learn and study. I'm not opposed to that. But if you want to give me lessons how to become a Christian, read the Bible, it'll tell you. You're in fact somebody, they had a men's fellowship thing down in Kentucky. And I kind of got excited, we need to go for the weekend. And I thought, well, you know, yeah, I might want to go. And then finally I said, what's their thing? Well, he's going to teach people how to speak in tongues. I said, I ain't going. Amen. You can't well, learn how to speak in tongues. That's right. That's right. If you read the Bible, you'll know that. But when we come to pray with somebody, are you expecting it to already be done? I, I always grew up knowing God would answer prayers. I always believed that. But I never really saw it until I got saved and the preacher I got saved under black hole in his preacher. When we had agreement prayers, he expected it right then, right now. And he didn't accept less. No, every time it wasn't answered. But their faith never <laughs> wavered. Well, we need to have those kind of prayers going forth that we're expecting Amen. God to move. Amen. And if we expect him to move, then shouldn't we be looking for it? Amen. You pray for something, but then you don't look at it. Oh, well, I never really thought about it. There's a church prayed for Florida to be taken out of their presence. I don't remember exactly how. All I remember is the bar owner found out they had prayed against the bar for God to shut the bar down. Well, burnt down is what happened. <laughs> they took the church to court and sued them, and they said, well, we never really thought it had happened. They had a perfect chance to stand up and witness of what God can do, but they didn't. We need to pray. We need to seek the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. But when they took him by the hand, there was no doubt in it. They, took, they lifted him up, and immediately, if you have... Yes light and motionless your legs yes. yep. there's atrophy sets in yes. and to stand up immediately and walk that yes. will have to go yes. and I remember a pastor on the radio um, he said one night man's back was so bad he couldn't hardly stand straight he, he leapt up for prayer and he said God, God's going to heal you we're going to pray and he prayed for him when he got done, he said, see if you can touch your toes. Man. And he couldn't. And he walked back, and he was really, because he thought he was going to get healed. And the Lord spoke to the preacher harshly and said, why did you doubt me? I didn't doubt you, Lord. I prayed for him. You didn't tell him to touch his toes. You asked him if he could. So he called him back up, prayed, said, touch your toes. The man bent over, touched his toes, was healed. Our words are very careful how Amen. we speak. Amen. And we need to be cautious in what we say. Pastor really didn't mean it the way that it came out, but it came out wrong. He didn't tell him to do it. We have the authority and gave it to us. We have the authority to beat the devil. We should defeat him. That's right. But as they went in, and night first, and all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which set at alms the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. 
And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them to the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But she denied the Holy One, and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. They crucified Jesus, and let a murder go. Isn't that about the way it's getting in this nation? Amen. They're, they're getting their laws so twisted and turned, and the candidates that are standing up against abortion, they're coming against them. That's right. I don't think it's a woman's right to determine the fate of a baby. That's right. I don't believe that. Pastor Fisher posted a picture of a little boy and girl, like maybe two years old, and said, why are we opposed to abortion? We don't think it's right to murder boys and girls. Well, it's not right. Amen. And it's wrong to do brother. that. But we're not seeing God move in the churches because people are not standing up against these things. Amen. Come if on. they would stand against Hallelujah. these laws yes. that are contrary to God's word, we would see a change in the station. Yes. If you're a politician and you find out you've got 20 million constituents that ain't going to vote for you because of your... Come you're going to change Amen. if you want to keep bro. your job. Amen. When I worked at the lumber yard, I knew there were things I couldn't do or I didn't have a job. Well, I made sure I didn't do it because I wanted to keep my job. Amen. Well, if we want to keep our walk with the Lord, we better start learning the Word and start exercising Amen. our faith. And as we exercise our faith, Amen. it will get stronger and we will get bolder. And you'll get a Holy Ghost boldness. And that's what the church needs. Yes. It's a Holy Ghost boldness. I never knew what that was growing up. Nobody had ever said anything about it growing up. And one night, when I was in high school, even grade school, I wouldn't do book reports. I would not get in front of the class. There's no way. Give me two Fs. <laughs> I don't care. It's nothing. I ain't getting in front of people. Because I was picked on a lot anyway, because I was real small. And the first time I testified in church was about 89 people. It was packed out. And the Lord will use different things to get your mind off so you can focus on what you're supposed to do. He was a short black preacher. And when I started testifying about praying pain out of my body, he got up and he started shouting. He was having him a hallelujah fit running across the church. Well, I got focused on him. I didn't even think about all the people behind me. And when I finished, that whole church was on their feet praising God, having it. I kind of looked around like, oh boy. I did that and I sat down. And next week, prayer meeting, I asked Kelber Taylor. He said, that's called Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost boldness, you've got it, and don't lose it. Amen. I said, what is that? He said, when you get Holy Ghost boldness, no matter how they're looking or how many people, you will not be afraid to go forth with what Amen. God gave you. Hallelujah. And if you're not afraid to do that, then you will do it the way God gave it. Yes. And as you give it forth, it will accomplish what it's said to do. And at the time, I prayed for you down my body. I wasn't saved. But I always had faith that I prayed every day because I was raised out of life. I wasn't living right, but I still prayed. And I was in a bad way. They didn't know what was wrong with me. I'm down to about 110 pounds. And except for the grace of God, I would have died back there. I would have died lost. But I thank the Lord that I didn't die then, that he healed me. But I was hurting so bad 
And at 2.30 in the morning, I said, Lord, you take me out of here or take this man out of my body. I don't care which. I don't care what. Need to go. And immediately it left. I won't get into details, but anyway, the pain left immediately. And I thank God for it. But when I was sharing that, that preacher got happy. We ought to get happy when people are testifying. Amen. Because we're overcomers by our testimony. And when we share them, but we're helping someone else overcome them. And when you have a need, search out your brother and sister and help them. God's going to take care of you. I remember a long time ago, a pastor friend I worked with, one morning at work, and I knew they were struggling money-wise. Things were desperate type for them. He said, brother, come here a minute. And I said, what's up? He said, I need God to bless me. And he said, he's got to move. And he shook hands, gave me some money. I, it turned out it was $50. And I knew they didn't have $50 to give. But he gave. And all I heard for the last four days, his wife was picking up their window wear unit for their trailer. He said, I'm going to get to go home and sit in the air. He said, oh, praise God. I can't wait. Well, walking out to my truck, and he and I were leaving at the same time, and the phone rang. It was his wife said, Honey, I hope you're not mad, but the lady at work had a greater need than us, and I give her our air conditioner. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. And he got happy and started <laughs> shouting. And I said, you all right? He said, oh, praise God, that blessed me so good. He was looking forward to it, but somebody had a greater need. Are we willing to do that? Peter and John didn't have any money, but they went in and gave what they had. But what we have inside of us is greater and more powerful than the world. All the guns, atomic bombs, everything are not as strong and as powerful as our God Amen. and our Amen. Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so what you have, you may not have money, you may not have a car to give them, but what you have is Jesus. Amen. You share that. Yep. And somehow or another it will work out. In the Praise church I go God. to Sunday morning, they had a fire. The sanctuary part's not hurt. And it's all on separate breaker, but they won't let them be in the structure until they get it fixed. And it's going to be probably maybe another month. I think it was November, not October, before they'll come and look. They got gas, water, everything shut off. He said, I'm not worried. God's going to take care of us. When we go through a battle, do we worry? Do we? No, we shouldn't worry if we have Jesus. Then we should never worry. We should be trusting him. And we should do that at all times. And when they lifted him up, he immediately started to walk. And there, uh, and I'll close with one other testimony of healing. Uh, Pastor Sam Luke, he said, one time there was a guy in a wheelchair and asked the wife to uh, bring him up. And he said, before I realized what I said, uh, you're going to walk tonight. And after he said it, he realized, you know, here's a guy in a wheelchair, been there 19 years. Mm -hmm. And he said, Pastor, you don't understand. I haven't walked in 19 years. He said, well, the Lord said you're going to walk tonight. So he prayed for him. And he said, well, he had hands on his legs. And he could feel all the muscles and everything came out. And he said, when he got done, that man come out of that chair and took off running. Praise God. He said, his third trip around the church, he said, about had to tackle him. And of course, you always want a good testimony when that happens. He said, oh, praise God. Tell everybody what the Lord's done tonight. He said, they'd have to be blind if they can't see what he did to walk running. <laughs> well, he's right. You'd have to be blind. But even when miracles happen, people don't believe. That's right. They think, well, and there's been a lot of times where <coughs> they've claimed to be miracles and they Sorry, weren't. Brother. They're false prophets. Yes. Right. And they are. And one night I took mom up for prayer. She could still walk. 
but a wheelchair was easier. And it was at Brother Stacy's church, Victory Hill. And I got my shoulder healed that night and my stomach healed when he was praying for mom. And I was new in the Lord. Well, anyway, um, we got out and then mom got up and, and this couple came over and I thought mom got healed and they were all excited. Well, I explained to them and somebody said, well, why'd you do that? I don't want you to go away with deception because at some point you may find out she could still walk and then you'd think somebody was trying to Boy, pull one over. Right. No, we need to be honest about Amen. it. Amen. But that night, uh, prior to that, I could get my right arm up about here and then I had a catch and to get it any higher, it hurt. And I was having stomach problems again. And my stomach did some things I can't explain when he was praying. And if I had been leaning on the chair, I think I'd have fell out in the spirit. And I was new in the Lord, hadn't ever experienced that yet. Well, for three days I felt really weird. And then it dawned on me, I was healed. Praise God. Three weeks to the day later, the devil will come back and try to take whatever you got from the Lord. And you'd better be prepared for that fight and take it to him. And if you take it to him, you won't have the fight later. Praise God. I woke up and my right shoulder hurt so bad I started crying. I was in pain. I said, devil, God didn't heal me temporarily. He healed me full time forevermore. Praise God. Amen. And the minute I said that, I felt this pain go down and shoot out my fingertips like a 30 caliber machine gun. I had to make a choice. And I chose to believe that I'm still healed. Praise God. I've never had shoulder problems again since. My left side, I was stroke. That's a different story. But the point is, when the attack came, I didn't fall victim. When the enemy attacks, know this word, stand on this Amen, word, brother. and throw it back in his face. Jesus did it. Amen. How did he come back? It is written. Well, when the devil comes back, it is written. Yes. My God did this. And what he did then, he did for now. Back to you, Pastor. Amen.